Hey guys, um, this is the uh, tutorial slash documentation video for the Comp 409 Project 2 Handin. Um, this is actually one of the one of the fourth fifth times that I've tried to do this video. My keeps crashing, so fingers crossed that this is the time that everything will work. Um, basically, I've done a uh, I've I've chosen to implement a paper for this assignment, um, the discrete model synthesis algorithm. Um, it's not a perfect implementation, but uh, it sort of sh gets the job done. Um, I thought I'd show you just a few images of, of what I've uh, what I've done. Um, so basically, I, I've I've chosen rails, um, some sort of railroad, um, and been able to generate a big scene. Um, perhaps uh, railroads weren't the best ones to choose because you would never see it, any train tracks that uh, actually look like this. Um, with all these, you know, barriers every every two seconds, every two steps. Um, but the reason why I've kind of shown this is to highlight the fact that this algorithm uh, is actually quite special in the sense that it uh, preserves connectivity information and connectivity constraints. Um, so you'll see that everything here kind of kind of looks right and finishes nicely. Um, and that's one of the sort of the results of the algorithm. Um, with the exception of maybe like here and here, which is where um, the various the grids ended um, for these generations, um, which is why they sort of just fall off. Um, but yeah, for everything actually inside our, our space that we're we're generating in, um, it looks good. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, these were done in Maya software as opposed to Mental Ray, which is why the images look a little bit rubbish because Mental Ray was sort of telling me it was it didn't like the fact that I had so much geometry in here. Um, but what can you do? Anyway, let's get into it. So we'll, we'll jump to Maya, boom. Um, you can see instantly here that we've got all of, the, of our track pieces all in a one by one by one voxel, um, each of them is contained. Uh, if we jump across here, this is, gives us sort of a diagrammatic representation of the discrete model synthesis algorithm. Uh, it was one of the papers presented in this class. Um, but basically, we assign uh, all the different parts of a model uh, with these labels. So zero being uh, no mesh, empty space, um, one being a certain type, two being another type, three being another type. Um, and from this, we know that a one will go before a two, and a two will go next to a three. Uh, from this from the sort of input um, so basically the way the algorithm works is is the user sets up this input and sets up the um, adjacency and connectivity information between each of the different pieces um, then the algorithm comes through and assigns a, a value uh, at random from a, from a catalog um, to a square and then calculates sort of the implications of assigning that value there so we know that a 2 has to be above a 1 which is why here the 2 is above a 1 um, and zeros have to sort of enclose one to all the other sides. Um, and you'll see that just by assigning this one value here, the algorithm sort of carried on recursively. And uh, yeah, uh, um, basically assigned all these other values as well. Um, so that's what's happening under the hood in a sort of high overview. Um, here's a bit of the code, I won't get too much into this. Um, this is the discrete model synthesis algorithm, my, uh, my implementation of it. Um, it's pretty big, it's caused me a lot of, a lot of hassle, <laughs> a lot of bugs. Um, but we've, we're pretty much there now for this hand, so that's good. Um, this is the node that we're using to sort of assist with uh, parsing user input to the discrete model synthesis algorithm. Um, so this is quite a, quite a beast, this file. Um, and then we've finally got a utilities file, uh, which is just, you know, does some stuff. Um, all located within the Comp 409 Project 2 folder. Uh, you will also get, as part of the source hand in, the procedural generator.py file, um, which you, you know, no, nothing special. Um, you just dump this guy and the 409 folder into the plugins directory and you're good to go. Um, oh, you'll also get an AE template, um, which you dump into the AE templates directory. Uh, I haven't got that up here, but um, but yeah, I'll put it in the uh, in the writer. Cool. So if we jump back to Maya, we can get going. Um, we've got all of our different uh, input geometries here. The first thing we have to do is make sure our renderer isn't set to 2.0. It's set to the legacy default viewport. Uh, 
The reason for that is because I'm drawing in uh, OpenGL, and this is sort of a nightmare to draw in OpenGL. <laughs> so we'll, we'll stick with this one. Um, up here I've got a few uh, shelf functions, so I just import my plugin, proceduralgenerator.py. Uh, here I create the node. It's not actually called procedural bounding box. I've renamed it to the unit labeler. Boom, and this just unloads it. Um, but we don't need to unload it for this video, so we'll just load it and then we will initialize it. And what you'll see is that a node pops up here. Boom, lovely. And we get a few uh, boxes here, which is nice. Um, so basically red box corresponding to input. If we say we want to show the input, only the red will show. If we say the output, you guessed it, the blue shows. Uh, if we say none, nothing shows, yeah, but we'll stick it on both. Uh, unit size is basically saying what's the size of each voxel. Um, so by default, it's one by one by one. Can't go any lower than that. If we say zero, no, it'll say declined. So we'll set it to maybe two, and you see that everything is like twice as big um, because our voxel size is different. You wouldn't really need to play around with this. This is sort of a utility for assigning to different meshes. Maybe you've got a mesh, or your whole mesh sort of database is twice the size of this. Um, you don't need to resize them all, you can just change this value. Boom, so the input grid dimensions, this is sort of what, what our input has to play with. Um, so I might set this to eight by one by eight. Uh, for this one I won't go up in Y, but I could if I wanted to. Um, I don't go up in Y basically because all my things are on the ground. <laughs> uh, but just say you had something like a staircase that was going, could go up infinitely. Um, you could also provide input sort of uh, vertical associations as opposed to horizontal ones. For the output grid, so how what the bounding box I'm generating in, I'm going to do a 10 by 1 by 10. Now I'm only doing it a little bit bigger um, because what I've noticed with this algorithm is it's very slow. Uh, I was I was here before and I was doing 100 by 1 by 100 and it took over an hour and it still hadn't finished. So. Uh, so that's no good. Um, yeah, 10 by 1 by 10 will take about 20 seconds, um, but any larger than that, and it starts to exponentially rise. So that's something to be wary of. Uh, finally, the grid opacity sort of just changes the opacity of what we're playing with here. So we can set it to something like 0.5. Um, and down here we've got all the labels, 20 labels to play with, um, which means we can associate 20 input models with each label. Uh, so the way we, we go around to do that is we select the models. Um, it's important that we select them in order because the first model that we select uh, is going to be assigned with the first label and so on and so forth. So yeah, the you know second model will be the second label, etc. etc. So having selected all our, our models in order, um, so this being the first one, this being the last one, we jump in here and we click associate model. And it comes up and tells us that a mesh has been successfully associated. What does this actually mean? Well, if we click on here and we say window, we go to our node editor, we click on our unit labeler, you can see that um, all of these different meshes, their out meshes are being assigned to the input mesh of this unit labeler dude. Um, yeah, so he's now got like an array of 19 meshes pumping into him, which is great. Um, if we wanted to delete one, we just delete one of the connections, that's fine. Uh, you may want to play around. Um, basically, this button's just a, a utility for connecting those nodes. Cool, so having done that, we'll click back on our uh, on our on our node here. We can kind of forget about these from now, they're they're already in the system. Um, we want to jump across to general and hit on show manipulators, and that brings up our, our special manipulator for this node. Um, so it's a free point manipulator with a special state manipulator inside. Um, when we click on the state, you'll see that it actually changes the voxel that we're currently in, in XYZ space, uh, to the first label color. If we continue clicking on it, um, basically it, it cycles through the labels. And what you'll also notice is that the selector state value is also going up. So it's no coincidence that um, we've got 20 labels and our selector state can go up to 20 before it jumps back around to zero. When we hit this, so selector state is one, what that's saying is that the mesh that we assign to label one through the associate model 
um, being this guy, is now actually uh, being represented here in our, in our grid by the color red. Uh, we can change this color, you know, we, might, we might want to say by the color white, um, for example, but I've set it up uh, so that actually the colors kind of nicely, um, are, are nicely separated. Uh, yeah, so we, we basically the idea is that we go through and we say that, okay, uh, if you've got this piece, what is it connected to? And actually, it might not be uh, best to start with this guy. I might start with this guy here because he's kind of a natural ending at this corner of the box. So he's one, two, three. So I'll click to bring that guy to three. And I might say that this guy connects to this piece. So then I move across in this direction and I select uh, one here. And now I know that whenever I see uh, this guy in my eventual output model, um, this guy uh, should be to the right of or left of him. Now this guy might pipe into this guy, which is our 11th from memory. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, he is. So to, to make that work, I can jump across here and say 11. Okay, so now... Uh, we've got connectivity there, and I might say that that station pipes back out into another, uh, this guy again. And finally, just to close off the loop, this guy shoots back off into this guy, so he's the fifth one. Boom. Now the idea is that the user goes through and they make up heaps of these sort of cells, um, sort of encoding this connectivity information into the input grid. Um, and you would you'd have multiple uh, different ones. So basically, the idea is that you want to highlight every possible association that this guy could make, uh, and this guy, and so on and so forth. Um, what else? Do I want to say anything else here? Um, it's a bit of manual setup. This doesn't actually mean that this pattern is going to be re uh, sort of recreated in the final. All it means is that. Um, the connectivity information is encoded in, so it knows that um, a red one can have a, a blue one on its on its right, or uh, uh, this one on its right, um, an orange one. And similarly, it can have um, one of these guys on its left, a yellow one, or a station on its left. Yeah, so um, the idea is that we go through and we, and we program in a bunch of different ones. I've actually set up something here, but what I might do is I might pause the video and then come back with it all set up and then we'll go through and we'll hit the generate button to generate everything.